Hello and welcome to today's presentation, Smith v. Allwright and Voter Suppression, presented by the National Abolition Hall of Fame and Museum, whose mission is to honor anti-slavery abolitionists, their work to end slavery and the legacy of that struggle, and strives to complete the second and ongoing abolition, the moral conviction to end racism. Smith v. Allwright was a landmark Supreme Court case in the United States that addressed racial discrimination in voting practices. The case was brought to the Supreme Court in 1944 by Dr. Lonnie E. Smith, a black American voter from Houston, Texas, in the Harris County District, one of the largest counties in the United States, who was denied the right to vote in a Democratic Party primary election. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, Jim Crow laws and other discriminatory practices were used to prevent black Americans and other minorities from voting. Voter suppression tactics included poll taxes, literacy tests, and grandfather clauses, and other requirements designed to disenfranchise non-white voters. In 1923, the Texas Democratic Party had limited voting in primaries to only white Americans. This was legal because the state of Texas had a law that permitted parties to establish their own internal governance rules. Primaries are important because they determine who might be the overall winner of an election. Primaries are elections that political parties use to select candidates for a general election. Then, each party's candidate runs against each other in the general election. The only white primaries were enforced in the Jim Crow South as a means to maintain white supremacy and power in the region. Political parties, particularly the Democratic Party, controlled access to the ballot box and utilized the primary system as a way to ensure that only white voters could participate in the selection of candidates for public office. This effectively excluded black voters, who were overwhelmingly Republican at the time, from participating in the political process. The only white primary system also allowed the white establishment to maintain control over elected officials and policy decisions, and reinforced the racial hierarchy of the Jim Crow era. Dr. Smith, who was a dentist and a member of the NAACP, challenged the discriminatory practice in court, arguing that it violated his constitutional rights. He was represented by the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, which was led by Thurgood Marshall, a prominent civil rights lawyer who later became the first black Supreme Court justice. The case was initially heard by a three-judge panel in the Federal District Court, which upheld the, the Texas law allowing white-only primaries. However, the case was appealed to the Supreme Court, which agreed to hear the case. The Supreme Court was then asked to consider, did denying blacks the right to vote in a primary election violate the Constitution's 14th and 15th Amendments? In an ununanimous decision, the Supreme Court ruled that the Texas law allowing white-only primaries was unconstitutional and that political parties could not exclude voters on the basis of race. The court held that the right to vote was a fundamental right guaranteed by the Constitution and that the denial of that right on the basis of race violated the 14th and 15th Amendments. In so ruling, Smith v. Allwright overruled an ununanimous nine-year-old decision and Groovy v. Townsend that had held that the Texas Democratic Party's race-based restrictions on voting in primaries was constitutional because it was not state action, and thus it had not been endorsed or authorized by the state. The 15th Amendment to the United States Constitution, ratified in 1870, prohibits the denial of voting rights based on race, color, or previous condition of servitude. The amendment was a response to the widespread disenfranchisement of black Americans in the aftermath of the Civil War and Reconstruction. Despite its passage, however, the 15th Amendment did not immediately lead to universal suffrage for black Americans. In the decades that followed, southern states implemented a range of discriminatory policies, including poll taxes and other requirements dis designed to disenfranchise black voters. It was not until the Voting Rights Act of 1965, which provided federal oversight of voting practices and eliminated many of the barriers to voting, that the full promise of the 15th Amendment was realized. Afterward, black certain participation increased drastically into the 1950s, demonstrating how dismantling the one party's political control over voting could benefit racial equality. 
In conclusion, Smith v. R. Wright was a crucial milestone in the struggle for civil rights in the United States. The case helped to establish the principle that voting rights could not be denied on the basis of race and it set the stage for further legal challenges to discriminatory voting practices. The decision was a major victory for Black American voters and the civil rights movement, and it paved the way for greater political representation and participation for all Americans. Thank you for watching today's video. Please help us by completing a brief survey at the link on your screen and also in the video description. Your feedback will help Nehoff receive funding and help plan future projects. Additionally, please contact Nehoff with any questions or comments or if you're interested in learning more about the organization. Don't forget to follow us on social media and we hope to see you at our next presentation. Thank you.